Hello friends, good morning. The new academic year has begun. This is our first session on English literature and language. Today we have a talk on an introduction to English literature and literary studies. Today we have in our studio two very eminent professors and authors. One is Dr. Deepta Acher. She is an associate professor with the Department of English MS University, Baroda. She is an experienced teacher, has taught to several classes and has earned a noun as a, and fame as a very uh, talented teacher. She has authored several books. She is in charge of the UGC Departmental Research Scheme of the Department of English, MS University, Baroda. We have another eminent fellow with us, Dr. Sachin Kathkar. He is also an associate professor in the Department of English, MS University, Baroda. He is himself a practicing poet. It is indeed a very great pleasure for all of us to have him with us. He writes poetry. He is a good translator and a practicing critic also. His latest collection of poetry is called Jara Sandacha Blog Varche Kahi Ansh. He writes in Marathi and in English. He has been teaching English literature to students for many years. This is a special initiative of the government of Gujarat higher education in which teachers from all over Gujarat, eminent teachers are invited to give talks on various topics. This is the beginning of this year's bisex session on English literature. And now I invite both the eminent scholars to give their very scholarly views about what is literature, why do we study literature, what are the things that a student while studying literature should keep in mind. So now I hand over the session to my friends, Dr. Kethkar and Dr. Acher. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, friends. So uh, we will have a very informal kind of talk uh, regarding very basic aspects of literature, regarding the thoughts that uh, usually occur to students when they enter the first year. What is literature? Why do we study it? What do we mean by literary studies? And uh, things like, what is literary criticism? So what I will do with Dipta here, that we'll have a conversation about the very basic elements of literary studies. And uh, so we will start with uh, the very definition of the term literature. And I will ask Deepta here to respond to uh, what is, in her view, meant by literature. So let's begin by looking at the slides and then followed up by discussion on the basic aspects of literary studies. So the first thing that comes to our mind is what is literature? And then we can think of why we study it in the first place. So if you can look at the ca cartoon, you can see that literature is a, just a long text message. So today when we think of literature, we're really thinking of a text, a text which is written down and which has a particular shape, a form belonging to a particular genre. Can That's very interesting. Uh, let us think about how we use the term literature in our day-to-day -day life. And when we use the word literature, we basically use it in two ways. First, we use it with a definite article. And uh, other way of using the word literature is without the use of definite article. Does it make so much of a difference? It, it does. It definitely does. At least for the students who, are, who want to find out what do we mean when we study literature. What is it that they are studying? If somebody asks them, what, is, what are you studying? Then they have to answer. I think uh, so uh, should they use uh, literature with definite article or should they use it without definite article? Let's look at the next slide. Uh, 
when we use uh, word literature with the definite article as I want to read all the literature on malaria it means I want to read everything printed available to me on the subject of malaria and when I want to use word literature with without the definite article what do we mean when we use it without the definite article as in I have selected literature as one of my subjects in college. It implies texts which have significant artistic value in a particular culture. Now do you think the text that you find in your mobile has significant artistic value, Dipta? Well, the day we have mobile novels, then it might have significant literary value. But as of now, we just use it to pass on common information and sometimes jokes and other uh, common things. So as of now, I would not say that literature without a definite article is found in mobiles. Right. But the distinction between literature with definite article and without definite article is a very important distinction for a student who just starts to study literature in college. The question then arises if well, literature without the use of article is what we are going to study, then why do we study it in the first place? Yeah, actually this is a question that has been answered in different ways all across time. When we first look at the study of literature, it was basically uh, done outside college. But when the study of literature entered colleges, then there were different reasons. One of the important reasons was to uh, expand education to groups of people who had not acquired knowledge. The second reason was to give information about a nation and a nation's culture. And later on, some people believed that we study literature in order to understand life, life itself. But today, I think there is a general consensus that we have a specific uh, uh, reason to study literature. And that is, if you look at the slide, because it is an extremely important part of our culture and society. It helps us to understand human beings, the society and arts in a better way. So basically to study literature is to study ourselves and our own culture. Uh, very often I have found Deepta that when students are asked what are you studying? or why are you studying the things that you are studying then they are at loss of words they don't know what to reply so I think now it should be clear that we study literature because it's such an important part of our culture and society and it helps us to explain and understand our own life and society around us uh, not only that we also have to understand that you cannot separate literature from society so if if we need to know more about our society, we need to study our literature as well. Right. Uh, Can we go to the next slide? Yeah, definitely. Let us look at how the word literature is used here. When we talk of Gujarati literature, if I'm studying Gujarati literature, I'm studying things like poems of Javer Chand Meghani or novels of Pannalal Patel. And uh, so why is it that uh, uh, things like a Gujarati newspaper is not uh, focused on in Gujarati literature? That I think ties up with what we were discussing earlier with what is distinction between literature with the and without the definite article the. So when we are reading poems by Meghani, we are studying literature with without the use of definite article. But the question that again would come to our mind would be, when we say Gujarati literature, what, is, what does the word Gujarati mean? Do you think it has just one meaning, the word Gujarati? In fact, it has several meanings. 
it can be a language such as the gujarati language it can also indicate a region which is the region of gujarat the state of gujarat and finally it can mean a community a people such as the gujarati people so whether a gujarati person is in gujarat or in the usa you can still be gujarati right so uh, i think we can this this will lead us further to what do we understand by english when we think of english we are students of english literature what do we understand by the word english so in the same way you can see that english can mean a language such as the english language it can also indicate a region that is the region of england from where you get the word english in the first place and finally it can mean a community or a nationality such as the english of uh, for example when we use the word the english ruled over india for several years so english can have several meanings just in the same way that gujarati has several meanings right. i was also thinking sachin that we uh, we need to think about what happens when we tie the word english with the idea of literature what does it mean when we say english literature so let's look at the next slide here it can also mean many things it can mean literature in the english language just like we talk of, when we think of gujarati literature we say literature in gujarati language so similarly when we talk of english literature it implies literature in the english language so it doesn't have to be people from england who write but exactly. it can be people like rk narayan our own rk narayan who has written malgudi days guide and so many other books as well as the poems of the american poet robert frost whose poem was uh, deeply loved by nehru stopping by woods on a snowy evening so there is a sense in which everything that is written in english everything literary that is written in english is literature in the english language so you can also include uh, poets from other nationalities like from australia new zealand writers from africa writers from south africa uh, from sri lanka who write basically in english language uh, we study them when we study english literature now let's look at the other meaning of the word literature yeah it also means literature from england we tend to use the term english literature for all literature from england that is plays of shakespeare novels of thomas hardy or charles dickens uh, short stories by various writers and essays by r l stevenson things that you have been reading right from school onwards right so if you uh, look at the term english literature then uh, we should keep it in mind that it means many things not just one thing so if somebody asks you the students tomorrow that what do you study when you study english literature then you should be able to reply that there are many literatures that we are actually studying and the term english literature has got many connotations and shades of meaning let's look at the next shade of meaning here it means literature of the english people L- literature of the english people also indicates literature by people of the english nationality they may come from ireland wales or scotland now this is something surprising isn't it we always think of england as or great britain as it is uh, called today as something which is of belonging which does not have many shades or many nationalities but the truth is england contains people of several different nationalities such as irish welsh and scottish the writings of 
uh, people from these areas which carry strong traces of their own region has influenced English literature in very profound ways. In the same way, we can say Gujarati literature has profoundly influenced the making of an Indian literature. So we can, we can see how English literature contains the writings of people from different regions within England. Deepta, sometimes question comes to my mind, if uh, people from England having same nationality as England, English, then what about their languages? What about Scottish language? What about Welsh? What about Irish? These are the languages, uh, uh, probably they also have their literature. Now can you call them English literature? What do this you is somewhat problematic. In, if we consider English literature to be literature in the English language, then perhaps we cannot call it English literature. But if we consider English literature to be that literature which comes from the territory of England, then perhaps we must allow it in. But there is no final answer to this question. It's very interesting. Now let's look at another way in which we think of English literature. And uh, the other way we can think of uh, things more complicated for us and our lives as students of English literature and as teachers of English literature. Let's look at the next problem on our hand. We are thinking of literature in English language which is translated from other languages. We also study literature from other languages like Gujarati, from Tamil. We can also think of languages like French and German translated into English and we often study such texts in our, uh, during our MA and BA courses. One of the texts which is commonly prescribed for uh, English literature courses is The Doll's House and it was not written in English, it was only translated into English. Similarly, when we read the Gitanjali in our uh, English language classroom, we are reading a text which was originally written in Bengali. The idea of studying English translation in our English literature courses is a new one. It is something which has come into our courses only in the last 15 or 20 years. Earlier, we would not be studying translations of Indian writings into English. But one good thing as a result of this, we get to study our own culture more closely through these translations. We no longer study a foreign language or a foreign, uh, a foreign literature as if it is something far away from us. Now literature can bring our own culture closer to us. And interestingly, English language has a role to play in bringing our own literature closer to us. Think about Tamil literature which is accessible to a Gujarati person or a Bengali person. So. Uh, liter English, the term English literature is extremely complicated having shades and variety of meanings uh, ranging from indications of nationality indicating a language that is English it indicates also the region called England but it also indicates literature which is translated from other languages to English language so what we have is a very complex and varied body of text which go under the name of English literature and I feel that this diversity is something that is to be celebrated. And in, don't you what? think that it is in some way very like India itself? Exactly. A wide variety of people, languages, cultures, but all housed under one nation. In the same way, we have a varied body of texts all housed under the title English Literature. So we have reached a point where uh, we are able to distinguish between the two ways of using the term literature and we have also reached a point where we can talk about the term English literature and various connotations of the term English literature. Now as we proceed further in our study of English literature, the first thing that comes to our mind is the idea of genre. And interestingly when a student is asked what are you studying, then usually 
students reply in terms of genres. We are studying poems or novels or plays. That's what we do usually. But these things, the technical term for this is genre. So let's look at the term genre closely. The next slide would be, what is genre? The word genre comes from the French, but before that, Latin word for kind or class. The term is widely used to refer to a distinctive type of text. Uh, when we think of types of text in literature, some of the uh, broad uh, cl classification of the ter various liter uh, literary texts would be as follows. Now let's have a look at the next slide. In literature, the main genres are poetry, prose and drama. Within drama, there are further divisions such as tragedy and comedy within the category of drama. And in prose, you also have the distinction between short story, novel, and essay. Uh, in poetry, the broad classification between epic poetry and lyric poetry. So you can see that each of these three broad uh, genres are subdivided and further divided into smaller and smaller category. And as you study more and more literature, you will find out more and more about smaller and smaller categories within these genres. Deepta, it's also interesting to keep in mind that the use of word literature with the definite article also has its own classification. For example, you can think in terms of genres of uh, various variety of writings which is not classified as literature. For example, things like a letter can also be thought of as a genre. Or itself. sports writing, right. travel writing, diary writing. But sometimes today the overlap between these forms of writing and the writing that you find in literature without the definite article is blurring. The distinctions are falling apart and now a well-written travelogue can also be a part of English literature. So this blurring of uh, genres is probably what Shakespeare had in mind when he was making fun of all various genres of uh, drama. So let's have a look at what Shakespeare had to say with tongue in his cheek about the whole idea, whole business of genre. Shakespeare refers sarcastically to the classification of uh, genres in his uh, very famous play Hamlet. He talks of tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral comical, historical pastoral, tragical historical, tragical comical, historical pastoral. I think Sachin, what uh, Shakespeare was trying to point out was that more important than a division or subdivision, what is more important is what a text is trying to do, what it is trying to say, and how it is put together as a literary text. Right. So, genre is the term that all students of literature should keep in mind, and uh, this is what you will be studying usually when you. Uh, reply to someone that I'm studying literature, uh, you imply uh, literary genres very often. So you can also think of uh, one of the definitions of the term literature would be in a very common way of saying in layman's language would be the study of genres which are classified as literary. The other term which is also very important to us is the term called literary studies. So the question that comes to our mind is why do we need to study literature because it's an important part important component of our culture and society then how should we study it and uh, in what way will we study it now these are the questions which scholars and critics have addressed for a long period of time so let's have a look at the term literary studies 
Literary studies is an all-inclusive term for the systematic study of literary texts. It adds to our knowledge of literature. It includes literary theory, literary criticism and literary history. Very important term, uh, word here would be the word systematic. Uh, and uh, that is the reason why it adds to the body of knowledge about literature. Now that we know why we need to study literature, we should also think of how to study literature and literary studies is a term that is used for a systematic inquiry, a study of literary text. Okay. And I think we should uh, pay attention if we go back to the slide, uh, we can see that there are three aspects to the study of literature. One, it is literary theory. Number two, literary criticism and three, literary history. It is when, so the systematic study of literature can be either or all of these three aspects. Yeah, so let us look in greater detail at the terms like literary theory, literary criticism and literary history. The next slide here talks about what do we understand by the term literary criticism? Literary criticism is a reasoned and systematic discussion of literature. It usually does not have the negative meaning we usually associate with the word criticism. This means that uh, criti it, it does not mean to say that this kind of text is bad or that is not well written but rather literary criticism studies systematically and deeply what is literature. So in a way when you study English literature you are learning to become a critic of English literature. You are not learning to write English literature but you are learning to do literary criticism. An analogy which I often give to my students is when you watch a film and uh, report to your friends about how it was, uh, f you might first just say I like the film or I didn't like the film, I didn't like this. But once you start giving reasons to that, once you start explaining things, once you start using a systematic kind of language to discuss uh, you, what you You say that the dialogue was unnatural or the actor didn't act well, the songs were rubbish. It is then that you start becoming a critic. Exactly. So criticism involves, that's the meaning of the term reason that we used earlier. It involves reasoning and it should be systematic. These are the uh, expectations from a critical discourse. Another uh, analogy which I use for my student is that criticism is also a form of language that you use to talk about literature. It's the way of speaking about literary text or works of art. So in itself, it's a form of language. By this, I think, Sachin, perhaps you mean that it ha literary criticism has its own technical terms. Exactly. Technical terms with which the discussion of literature takes place is the language of literary criticism. So it is important as students of literature to have familiarity with technical terms of literary criticism. So when you discuss a novel, you should know what the difference is between a story and a plot. You should know what an atmosphere is or what a setting is. So it is these things, it is the knowledge of these aspects which allow you to become a better literary critic. Now let us look at uh, various types of criticism. There are many theoretical approaches to uh, literary criticism, but that there are two broad uh, categories of literary criticism. So let's look at the two main types of criticism here. Let's look at the next slide. We usually contrast theory with practice. That is, thinking about something to actually doing something. Hence, we can think of two types of criticism, 
theoretical criticism which is thinking about literature and practical criticism which is about the analysis of literature so let's look at the terms theoretical criticism and practical criticism little bit more closely because as students of literature we are expected to understand the distinction between two though the distinction is not very uh, natural or normal at particular point it breaks down just because the re relationship between theory or reflection and acting or practice is always a complicated one but it's a usual it's a very useful distinction to make so let's look at the next slide which looks at both the terms little bit more closely the theoretical criticism or what is understood as literary theory more generalized abstract and conceptual discussion of literature like the definition of literariness classification of the various types of literature relation of literature and society literary values and so on is called literary theory so what is implied by theory here is that it's very general and at the same time it's very abstract so one of the reasons why students find it difficult to gra grapple with criticism and theoretical criticism is because it's very abstract very general and very very conceptual but it is also very important to uh, to uh, learn a little bit of literary theory that is because if we only studied individual texts we would never understand the relationship between texts so we would never understand the relationship between literature and our culture we would not understand the relation between literature and history so literary theory allows us to see connections between texts between literature and society literature and history so i am afraid hard as it might be we should not and cannot get away from it uh, what it implies probably is that we are looking at the bigger picture not just the specific text so how is uh, the particular text that you are looking is related to the bigger picture and the bigger questions like what is literature or what is relate what is function of literature how does it relate to society what is uh, what is meaning of the term literature for society and its history so these are very big issues that theory usually raises and these are extremely crucial for enhanced understanding of literary text and so it's you and it's very interesting when you contrast it with yes. practical criticism so let's have a look at the term practical, practical criticism, criticism. just some information for you examples of literary theory you can see that literary theory is very very old and it took place in all parts of the world you have aristotle uh, poetics written uh, in 335 bce in greek and bharata's natyashastra of india which is uh, written perhaps in 200 bce a around there nobody exactly knows where it was written and these are some of the earliest examples of theoretical criticism shall we have a look at more recent examples of uh, literary theory yes especially because literary theory has been an important branch of thought right from aristotle's time right up to ours reni velek and austin warren's theory of literature and jonathan culler's literary theory a very short introduction are recent examples of theoretical criticism and you, the picture you see is of jonathan culler uh, other very pertinent examples of recent theoretical studies of literature would include catherine bell's uh, critical practice and slightly dated but equally interesting north of prize anatomy of criticism in probably 1949 yeah. probably the same year as renewelic and austin morin's yeah. book was published these are texts that you might be studying either in the third year of ba 
or perhaps in MA. But uh, it is useful, however, to know that such texts exist and to uh, recognize that it is not enough to read a poem, but you must also understand what that poem means and how to discuss that poem. So again we come to the idea of literature as a form of language where, which we use to discuss which, something which is already linguistic like work of art in which is called literature. So some people use the term meta language to, uh, to describe criticism. Okay. Meta means over. Language all of you know. So meta language means it is a language about language. So Literary criticism can be, or literary theory can be thought of as a language about language. So interestingly, while theoretical criticism looks at literary texts in a very broad perspective, which are historical, social, cultural, philosophical, practical criticism looks at the individual and particular aspects of the text. So let's have a closer look at what do we understand by the term practical criticism. Let's look at the next slide. The image you see on your uh, screen is the one of the most important works of practical criticism. And I.A. Richards is the critic who is very closely associated with this method of criticism. Practical criticism involves analysis, interpretation, and evaluation of particular literary texts rather than discussion of literature in general. I think that is a very important term uh, in general because uh, in theoretical criticism we are looking at literary texts from a very broad perspective. In practical criticism we are attending to very specific and particular qualities and elements of the text that we are confronted with. For example, when you are analyzing a poem or a novel, you are dissecting it, you are, uh, you are interpreting it, you are explaining it, at the same time you are evaluating it, you are practicing what is known as practical criticism. The study of specific texts is very important to the, the subject of English literature. Most of what we do in our undergraduate courses focuses on the study of particular texts. So much of what students of undergraduate classes do is practical criticism. What is done in our classrooms is practical criticism. But when we study a poem or a play or a novel, we find that we just looking at the words on the page is not sufficient. We also need to understand the context, that is, when the poem was written and how it was written. Right. And also why it was written probably. When we are trying to place it in a very broader cultural context, we are trying to understand uh, the text in a very broader context when we are using what is the theoretical approach to To give criticism. an example, one of the uh, texts uh, that, uh, that we study is Shakespeare's Macbeth. I'm sure some of you would have seen the film Makbul and Makbul is supposed to be based on Shakespeare's Macbeth. Now, in the why did Shakespeare write Macbeth when he did? After all, it's about, what is Macbeth about? It's about a king. It's about the murder of a king. And it is about how, what happens when you try to become a king by wrongful means. Now, the reason why kingship was so important in Shakespeare's time was because monarchy was the burning issue of that time. Similarly, when we look at Panalal Patel's uh, Bhavni Bhavai, you find that he writes about hunger, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. He writes about hunger and the plight of common people because that is the burning issue of his time. So you cannot understand the text only by reading the text. We all need to understand history a little bit in order to understand the meanings of that text. I fully agree with you, Deepta. And at the same time, let me point out that practical criticism is, as Deepta said, very closely tied up with classroom practice. And that's why earliest examples of practical criticism were tied to the idea of classroom teaching or what is called pedagogy. If you look at the examples of practical criticism in the next slide, you will see that some of them are purely for classroom purposes, like understanding poetry by Clint Brooks and Robert Penn Warren is an excellent example where the critics uh, show how to analyze, discuss, evaluate those poems or the texts. Particularly for the classroom. classroom. And though it was published in 1938, it still continues to be in wide use even till today. Be it, this shows that practical criticism is an essential part of lit, uh, English literature in India today as well. Right. So, till now we have seen some of the very basic and fundamental ideas uh, that a student of literature ought to know and those ideas, let me recapture it very quickly. The first is the distinction between the two ways of using the term literature which helped us to define something like literature. The definitions are of course very difficult, but for our purpose, a working definition of literature is what we arrived at when we said that literature without the use of definite article, which indicates text having significant cultural value, artistic value, are called lit can be classified as literature. The second thing that we thought about was the term English literature and we saw that it's not a simple term at all and it has got a whole variety of meanings and the whole uh, term English literature includes various kinds of texts, the texts from uh, England, those texts written in English, those texts written by people who come from England and, and uh, the literary texts which are translated from other languages into English language. Then we went over to the whole idea of literary studies, wherein we looked at the three aspects of literary studies. One is theoretical uh, literary theory, the other was literary criticism, and the third, the very important category is that of literary history, and that is what we are going to look at a bit closely now. Now let's look at the term literary history. So we'll look at it in our next slide. What is literary history? Literary history implies history of a particular literature, that is, history of Gujarati literature or history of English literature. It is concerned with changes in literary norms, periodization, dominant trends, important authors, texts of various periods and tradition. So, when we, study lit, uh, when we study literature and when we study English literature, as we move ahead, then we are confronted with various periods and eras in which literature was produced and we read those literary texts as representing those periods and eras. So some of very common periods in English literature are as follows. So we will just put it up for uh, you. You can take them down if you want. Let's have a look at the common periods of English literature. Shakespeare, for example, wrote in the Elizabethan age. The Commonwealth period was the period where Milton flourished. So you can see each of these ages, Renaissance, Elizabethan, Jacobian, Caroline and Commonwealth had their own important writers and different genres 
For example, in the Elizabethan period, drama was more popular. In the Commonwealth period, drama was banned and the focus was on prose and on poetry. In the next century, the next uh, in, you have the Restoration period which comes towards the end of the 17th century, the Neoclassical period, uh, the Augustan age where important writers like uh, Swift and Pope wrote, the age of sensibility where uh, no people started focusing on emotion and the Romantic period uh, with the famous Wordsworth, Coleridge, Keats and Shelley the fo with the special focus on poetry. Uh, and finally, we have the Victorian period of the 19th century, the Edwardian period of the early 20th century, the Georgian period, and finally, from 1914, the beginning of the First World War, we have the modern period, a period which has decisively changed literature in a way that has affected drama, poetry and prose in a way which has never been seen before and today we have postmodernism as well. So you can see that a student of literature has to know what is literary history. Student of literature is supposed to know the definitions of the term literature. The student of English literature ought to know what is English literature and these are the things that we looked at in a very basic and simple way. Another very important idea that is related to the idea of literary history is the idea of canon. What do you think Dipta, about the term canon? Is it the same canon that you find on the forts? Uh, not actually. I, canon really is a very simple thing. It just means a list. It's just a list of books, but it's a very special kind of list, like a merit list. When colleges open and you're anxiously looking at your name, is my name on the merit list? In the same way, a uh, canon is just a list, uh, just a list of very special literary books which is to be found in English literature. Sachin, I was wondering, if uh, we had any questions from students who have been listening to us Could so far and if we can take some questions if there are any. Yeah, if students have questions they can call, uh, call us here. The numbers are given to the colleges. This was a very fruitful uh, session. Both the eminent faculties have discussed the very basic concept, what is literature, the very basic question that every student faces when he uh, enters colleges as a student of literature. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, uh, both of them have clarified the issues minutely in detail, giving very uh, interesting examples and making things lucid for the students. And I hope all of them must have uh, enjoyed. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Sachin, uh, we often hear about uh, literature of power and literature of knowledge that is how we usually uh, uh, d uh, divide uh, literature. So, uh, can we say something about that to our students? Interestingly, the distinction between literature of power and literature of knowledge was made by De Quincey yeah. in 19th century. Yeah. And probably what he was trying to do is to have his own list of uh, his authors yeah. in the merit list. Yeah. 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 <laughs> An attempted <laughs> canonization. Yeah. 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 In it. But um, um, in, a, in a general way we can say that uh, the literature that gives information, that is what he wanted to suggest, that literature that gives information, that is the word literature used in a very general sense. For instance, a telephone directory and we say we, I have all the literature about say inflection, inflation and there we use the word literature in a very general way, we telephone directory or uh, railway timetable. Use that is the literature. And when we say literature, that means literature of power. That is 
creative literature. Right. That is what uh, uh, probably the distinction suggested. And uh, as you rightly said, De Quincey was uh, attempting a sort of canonization. He was right. giving, he, he was making a list of his own um, uh, writers who, are, who have merit. So that is how I think uh, uh, literature can be uh, best understood. Our students will now come in close contact with uh, works of literature. They will read them. They will form their own opinion. And that is when I think the literary study begins. The, the, the student starts forming their own, own opinion about a poem. When he says that I like this poem, then the uh, critic in him begins to react and starts analyzing, uh, appreciating, evaluating the, the text that uh, he has uh, with him. We have some uh, textbooks, shall we show them yeah, to our students? These are very useful books yeah. for literary studies, for beginners. The first is Glossary of Literary Terms by M. H. Abrams. Then you can uh, have a, the book called Literary Theory, a very short introduction by Jonathan Culler. Which and this mentioned. is uh, basically for slightly more advanced, advanced students. students. Right. But glossary of literary terms can be, you should try and refer to it as much as possible right from the first year of uh, BA onwards. It's, it's used like a dictionary and you can uh, learn about different types of genres, different periods of history, different kinds of criticism if you look up. Uh, a glossary of literary terms. So please uh, go to your college library and look up a glossary of literary terms. M. H. Abrams is one good uh, glossary, but you can also look up the Penguin glossary of literary terms, and there are many others also. But please try and look up these books because this will be just as a dictionary is the glossary of literary terms is your companion through your li English literature course. May I add, Deepta, the internet as one of the sources and yeah, resource definitely. material for a yeah. student of literature. And there are many online glossaries too, which you must just have to Google the word English literature and you will have a list of very useful websites which will help you in the course of study. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, um, Ketkar, Dr. Dr. Acha. Pandya, the time could we just have one last yeah, slide? Yeah. That slide could be shown. It is very <laughs> interesting for students. Uh, the time does not permit us. But otherwise, this is a very interesting topic. I think we will leave students with this We nice. will yes, leave yes, students definitely. with this uh, <laughs> slide. Yeah. Hope you enjoy your um, uh, study of literature and hope you enjoyed this session and also. And we wish you all the best for your yeah. future. Hope you become real students of English literature. You enjoy your study, not as an academician, but re in real sense, you enjoy the literature that you study, and then you will become a, a real student of literature. Thank you all. Thank it you, was Kevin. a very um, a studied talk, and thank you on behalf of all the students who listened to you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank yeah. you very much.